Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below. Hello everyone, welcome. This is Dr. Jacobs. In this video, I'm gonna go over seven signs and symptoms of magnesium deficiency. But before we do that, we need to know what is magnesium, the benefit of having magnesium in our body, and then we go over the signs and symptoms that might be related to you and how to address those symptoms to get your magnesium to normal level. Yeah, magnesium is a macro minerals, which mean it's a very essential mineral. It's the second abundant intercellular mineral in the body after the potassium. So it's extremely, uh, uh, there is large amount of magnesium needed in the body for normal cells uh, function. So, and there's at least 600 to 800 enzymatic, enzymatic reaction in the body. It's required for a lot of chemical reaction. The problem is several chemical reaction in the body will not occur properly if we don't have enough magnesium. That's very significant. So uh, most of the magnesium actually co concentrated in the bone, and this is important for a couple of the reasons that we're gonna go over for the sign and symptoms. 27% in the muscle, 19 in the soft tissue, and 1% in the blood. We're gonna get back to this percentage um, when we do the treatment. So uh, magnesium is very important. Why? Because we have a molecule in the body, it's called ATP adenosine triphosphate, and that's required as part of the energy for all the cells. So it's a steward, that molecule is stores and transfer energy. So think about the ATP is like the fuel in your body. We need to have ATP for most of your cells to function properly. So we need the magnesium actually to convert the adenosine diphosphate, and you can see it here in this image, it has to bind with the magnesium in order to activate the ATP. What that mean? If we do not have enough magnesium, it's like your battery is not charged enough. It's on 5% of your charge, so it's barely uh, doing the minimum work in your phone. It's the same thing in the body. If we don't have enough magnesium, there is not enough ATP, which is actually the basic molecule that's required to store or and transfer energy in the body. So it's gonna affect the function of your whole body. That's important, we're gonna get back to this when we talk about so, the, some of the signs and symptoms. The other thing that uh, we need to understand is the magnesium induced the parasympathetic system. So in the body we have uh, the autonomic nervous system, it consists of sympathetic and parasympathetic system. The sympathetic system is the fight flight. When you have emergency, under stress, you're just anxious, your heart rate increase, your blood pressure increase, you just, you, your, your eye uh, dilated. So you will have a lot of fight flight reaction of emergency and that's uh, stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system. And we have here the magnesium, the calcium actually induces the sympathetic nervous system and it's important to notice that because I will get the, it will make sense what I'm gonna mention in the next few slides, why calcium could be an issue here. So magnesium is actually help the body to relax. It's, induce the parasympathetic nervous system, which is a relaxing state, decrease heart rate, decrease blood pressure, and uh, the relaxing state of the body. So magnesium affects the conductivity of the nervous system, muscle contraction, and normal heart rhythm. We'll get back to this. So what are the signs and symptoms of magnesium deficiency? So I'm gonna go over several studies that confirm those signs and symptoms. And at the end, we're gonna talk if it's applicable to you and what you should do at the end, why you should take supplement or not take supplement. And um, so the first um, common deficiency uh, sign and symptoms is muscle twitching or cramps. 
So based on a lot of study, it shows that when you have magnesium deficiency, you start to have mag uh, muscle cramp. Like here in this study, the results suggest the magnesium may affect in the treatment, effective for the treatment for nocturnal leg cramp, which is night and leg cramp. A lot of patients actually might experience that, and that's a very classic sign of magnesium deficiency. Could be other deficiency, but it's extremely common with the magnesium. And I want to go over this image here. So there's really a kind of the relationship between magnesium and calcium. So when you are deficient in magnesium, we need to have a lot of magnesium in your cells in general. So when you are deficient in magnesium, there is open space here and the, al the calcium rush in, into the cells. Why does that's an issue? Because calcium, too much of calcium, it's actually irritated the nervous system, irritate the cells, it excites your body, it puts you in a fight, flight, anxious state. So the problem that we have in America here that um, currently our diet is the ratio between calcium and magnesium is 10 calcium to one magnesium. When we looked at our ancestor diet, their diet is the ratio between the calcium and magnesium is one to one, which mean our diet is really extremely high in calcium and cause this issue and cause a lot of those signs and symptoms that uh, will continue going over it. Um, the second sign and symptoms, um, seizures and convulsions. So magnesium play a key role in activate, um, transport, transport the calcium and potassium ions across the cell membrane, and you can see it here. And if your magnesium is not uh, enough in your system, that reaction will not work properly, and your nervous system will be in an exciting state. So it helps with nerve impulse and muscle contraction. And based on the studies, it shows that when patients start to take magnesium supplements, they have significant decrease in the number of seizures per month. And that's what explains the relationship between calcium, magnesium, and in the body. So the third cause or the third uh, sign is fatigue and muscle weaknesses. So um, going back to the other slide talking about the ATP, so if you don't have enough ATP, you're gonna be t tired, you're gonna be fatigued. And that's exactly what the studies confirm here. So muscle strength is seriously impaired in young magnesium deficient subject, while magnesium rapidly reverses muscle weaknesses. So if you have muscle weaknesses, muscle fatigue, by the way, muscle weaknesses and muscle fatigue, it's common with a lot of other different deficiencies. But when you start to see several of these signs simultaneously uh, in your uh, body, that's a sign that you probably have magnesium deficiency. So the fourth sign of magnesium deficiency is high blood pressure. Why? When we look here back in the sympathetic and parasympathetic system, that when your magnesium is low, your heart rate is going to be up, your, actually your, your blood vessel will be constricted, constricted, which means tight, and that's increased your blood pressure, and that's exactly what the study found. So um, oral magnesium acts as a natural calcium channel blocker. As I mentioned before, calcium is excitatory and we don't want too much of that because it's going to increase your blood pressure. It's going to cause a lot of health issues. And I will have a video on calcium why you should not take calcium supplement unless we do lab work for that and shows deficiency because it's going to increase your risk of several health issues. So in increase the nitric oxide, improves and do Thelial dysfunction and induce direct and indirect vasodilation. So actually, the, cal the, the magnesium causes vasodilation, open up the constricted um, blood vessels. When that happens, the blood pressure will be decreasing. So oral magnesium supplementation probably had a positive effect on the blood pressure reduction in the patient with essential hypertension. There are several studies shows the same result. 
So the fifth sign and symptoms of magnesium deficiency and usually happen when you have it for a while, insomnia, which is like problem with sleeping, getting to sleep, or staying asleep for, um, until the morning. So what they found that the supplementation of magnesium appears improve subject measurement of insomnia, such as the ASI <coughs> score, the sleep efficiency, the sleep time, sleep onset latency, and early morning wakening. So it's actually helped with the sleep in general from the beginning to the end and the continuing of the sleep. The sixth sign and symptoms is lowering magnesium intake is associated with the lower BMD, which is actually the bone mineral density of the hip and the whole body. What that mean? So let's go back to how much magnesium in the body. It's 50 to 60% of your magnesium that you take on average, we need 25 milligram of magnesium in our body. So 50 to 60% of that magnesium is actually deposited and used in your bone to have really strong bone. So when you have magnesium deficiency, that will could lead to osteoporosis, osteopenia, decrease bone density. And that's what they have found in the studies that lower magnesium intake that will cause uh, decreased bone density. And it's a very common misperception. If you have decreased bone de density, that you have calcium deficiency. That is not correct unless you have a lab confirming that you have a calcium deficiency. Because American diet is 10 times calcium to one, to one, one unit of magnesium which is actually mess up our magnesium calcium ratio in the body and cause decreased bone density and other health issues. So the last sign and symptoms, and that's usually happen for really severe cases, that you start to have a regular heartbeat. So uh, based on this study, they found the incident of atrial fibrillation and sup uh, supraventricular tachycardia was higher in the hypomagnesemic patient. So they found that uh, the, the heart rhythm is off by uh, increasing the heart rate uh, for the patient that have low magnesium. Because as we mentioned, as I mentioned, is magnesium required for the soft tissue, for the muscle contraction, for the APT production, and for actually to calm your nervous system, to, to make your heart work properly, it, you need to have enough magnesium. And when you don't have that enough magnesium, your heart will start uh, be, heart rate will start to increase. So what should we do to address magnesium deficiency? First, if you have combination of those deficiency, there's very high chance that you have magnesium deficiency. But I wanna point on something extremely important because a lot of people think, okay, my problem is only magnesium. So from my personal experience after my second cancer treatment, it, and from the patient I usually see, that never, it's never one hormone, one, one mineral, or one vitamin that's deficient that cause those symptoms. It's very common to have a combination of deficiency of vitamins, mineral, hormonal imbalance. So to give you an example, we have in the body 13 vitamins. We have 16 minerals over 50 hormones and over 40 neurotransmitters. And our body work properly when everything is balanced because when your magnesium is deficient, it's gonna affect your D absorption. When your calcium is high, it's actually gonna lower your magnesium. So we have to have really perfect balance between all the vitamins, minerals, and hormones. And a lot of these symptoms, there are symptoms very prevalent to the magnesium and uh, some of these symptoms are actually combination of magnesium deficiency and other vitamins and minerals deficiency. So what you should do to really figure it out, if you start to have those symptoms, there's high chance you have magnesium deficiency. But 
what should you do if you have the magnesium deficiency? Well, one of the things that a lot of people do and uh, is doing lab work. The problem with that is the, the, the blood work is not very accurate to detect magnesium deficiency because when we look back here, in the blood, there's only 1% of the magnesium. And those studies based on American diet, which is actually have the imbalance between the calcium and magnesium. So when we look at this blood work, we have to be extremely careful because those blood work are not sensitive blood work to determine uh, the deficiency. There's a uh, narrow range of the values of the blood work we look at, not the wide range that usually appear in the blood work. So the other thing is you can take magnesium supplements, but when you have severe deficiency, we have to know how much deficiency you have. Because if your body needs 100 milligram of magnesium and you take in five milligram of magnesium, that's barely not doing 5% of the, meeting 5% of the deficiency. So that's important to look at what, how much deficiency you might have to really dosage you the proper dosing. The other issue is there are several formulas of magnesium. There's some absorbable, other it's not absorbable. So even if you take the 100 milligram of magnesium that's not absorbable, it's not gonna do much because your body gonna flush it out. It's not gonna be utilized very well. So it's very important to know the form of magnesium, to know the dosage of magnesium. I'm gonna go over the forms in other videos, but one of the easiest way to figure out what issue you might experience, magnesium deficiency or other vitamins, mineral deficiency, is Ask Aster. It's a free online software that uh, it takes about five minutes answering questionnaire, and the software will guide you through the process of possibly having magnesium deficiency or other issue that could be related to magnesium and other uh, hormonal or vitamin deficiency. And w the software will give you a steps on how to address those based on your medical history. It's, cu it's a customized plan for you. So uh, if you have any question or comment, leave it in the comment section below and I will answer it in a future video and I will see you soon in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive helpful tips on how to relieve pain. If you have any questions, put it in the comment section down below or go to asterinstitute.com.